Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to give you uh, much details in solving one of the problem 2.33 in the textbook. So in this problem you are asked to determine the magnitude of the resultant force and its direction, so especially measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. So I highlight this in red and I'm going to address this uh, later. So in this picture, you have three forces, F1, F2, and F3. So the magnitude of each forces are here, and the directions of these forces are represented by the angles 3, 30 degree, 45 degree, and also by a small uh, slope uh, uh, triangle here. So I a, a larger uh, triangle for this. So to solve this problem, we actually use the three steps as we mentioned in the classroom. So the first step is that we are going to resolve every individual forces into the x and the y components. So in step two, we're going to add all the respective components to get the resultant vector. And finally, we're going to find the magnitude and the angle from the resultant components. So let's start from step one. So first of all, I'm going to draw a table. So I'll put F1 here followed by F2, F3, and I'm going to draw a line here. So this is our result, resultant force. So I will divide this, this area into two columns. So I put I here. So this means this is along X axis and this is for Y axis. So now I'm going to do the first step. Resolve all these individual forces into the X and the Y components. So let's do F1 first. So I'm going to use a pen, a red pen, to resolve the first force F1 onto X and the Y coordinates. So if I draw a dashed line, and from the center to here, I got F1 X. From the center to here, I got F1, Y. There's no angle here, but we can assume that this angle is alpha, for example. And in this bigger picture, you will find that this, I, this angle equals to that a small, very small angle, alpha. And this also here, we've got alpha here. So F1x is equal to F1 multiply by alpha, which is cosine alpha. Because we don't know alpha here, but we can know how to calculate cosine alpha from this small little triangle. So in this, this small triangle, cosine alpha is equal to this side, which is 4, divided by the slope side, which is 5. Okay, now we have F1x, and that's the x component, and F1 is 850 here. 
So we, we will put this one x component here. So this equals 850 multiply 4 divided by 5. OK, this is x component for f1. Now we check f y component for f1. We need to check the directions for each component first. So for f1 y, as you can see, it's pointing the opposite way, the negative pointing to the negative y axis, so that you have you will have to put a minus sign here first. And then so the magnitude of F here is eight fifty times this is alpha times sine alpha. So in this small triangle, sine alpha equals three divided by five. So that's for F one. Now we'll check F two. So we'll draw a rectangle here from the center to there. We got F two x from there to here we get f to y now we check the direction of fx which is opposite it's pointed to the negative x-axis so we need to put a minus here first and so this is a 30 degree so f to x here which is equal to from here to here, this side, so it equals six to five sine thirty degree, and we will check f to y, the sine first. So f to y is pointing to negative y, so it also have a negative minus sign here to six to five. Because we already know this is sine, so this has to be cosine. We don't have to check that again to save time. So now we will do uh, F3. From the center to here, we got F3x. From center to there, we got F3. Y. So for F3x, again, it's pointed to negative, so we put a negative first. The magnitude of F3 is 750, because this is 45 degree. Actually, this is a 45 degree as well. So F3x is cosine 45. And F F three Y is positive, so it's seven fifty sine cosine forty five. Okay, so actually now we have finished step one. We have resolved all three individual forces into the x and y component. So I call this a row calculation, row by row. And now we're going to add the respective components to get a resultant vector. So in this case, we're going to do column calculations. So this is x component for the resultant force, which I will use FRx, and this is FRy. So basically for FRx, You need to sum all three x components for individual forces all together. So that's 8, 50. So then you just copy all these terms here. Just to make sure you're not going to make any mistakes in copying. So 
So now you're going to use the calculator. So for third, for sine 30 degree, sine, and you put a 30, so 0.5, so this is 0.5, and we're going to do cosine 45 degree, We're going to use uh, four significant figures for that. So it's uh, 0 0.7071. And if we do this calculation, and you bear in mind that this is an intermediate calculation, so you're going to use four significant figures for that. So you can get an answer of minus 160. 2.8 and don't forget unit not Newton and similarly you will do F R Y so you sum here you sum all three forces here just copy them So again, you use four significant figures, and if you use your calculator, you will get the answer of minus 520.9 Newton. So now we have got the X and the Y component for the resultant force. So the magnitude of the resultant force, FR, you can do a simply by this equation. So if you use your calculator, you will get something like something like that. So bear in mind, this is the final answer, and you just need to use uh, three significant figures. So th this one will be rounded up, and you will get five, four, six Newton. That's for the magnitude of the resultant force. And now we're going to decide the angle. So to do that, first of all, you're going to draw a sketch. So you can draw a coordinate system first. X and Y. And now you're going to put the calculated FRX here and FRY. Put these two components onto the sketch. So FRX is minus 162.8. So it's minus, which means that it's pointing to it's pointing to negative axis. So you can use from here, so pointing to there. So you can actually write FRX here and also for FRY minus again so it's pointing to Y ne negative Y so because the absolute value of FRY is actually bigger than FRX so that's why I make this lens longer than that lens so this is FRY 
equals minus 5 to zero point nine. So now we are going to calculate the resultant force. We are going to show the resultant force by using the parallelogram law. So basically we are going to draw a dotted line here and here. So we have a rectangle. And from the center, and we have an intersection point here, from the center to the exception point. Okay, now we've got the FR, which is the resultant force. So this is a sketch to show the, the resultant force, but also we need to calculate uh, the angle to show the is uh, to show the exact direction. So let's turn to the question. So the questions ask us: the direction will be measured counterclockwise from positive x-axis, which means that this direction will be measured from positive axis and counterclockwise, which means that this way all here. If I say this is a theta, so we actually we need to decide theta. So basically, theta, if you have a look, theta actually equals 180 from here, down here, plus from here to here, if I use another angle, say for example, alpha. Okay, now we need to decide what alpha is. We can use actually different ways. The normal way is that we use a tangent, uh, <coughs> tan tangent functions. Function. So, for example, tangent alpha here equals to the side alpha facing here, which equals to here, and then the length is 520.9 divided by another side this side, so it's 162.8. So if we calculate that, we can get something like three point, something like that. So what is alpha? So alpha is arcotangent. So now, uh, I'm going to use a calculator again. So if you want to use arc tangent, you need to press shift first. And you press tangent, and you input its value, which is 3.199. Okay, now you get 72.1. Six, because this is the final answer, so we actually only need three significant figures and degree. So the final answer actually, because we we actually looking for theta, so theta equals one hundred and eighty plus alpha. So again, this is four significant significant figures. We only need a three, so this is a round up and go to five three degree. Okay, so finally, we we get the. So let's check the questions again. We determine the magnitude of the resultant force, which is here in three significant figures and its direction measured counterclockwise from positive x-axis and that's theta equals three, 253 in three digits so so actually we have done it okay thank you for watching and i hope this will be helpful when you do any exercise in the tutorial session and in the exam Good luck. Thank you. Bye-bye.